One of the biggest downsides of flying digital FPV systems, like this goggle from Walk Snail or Fat Shark, depending on who you bought it from, one of the biggest downsides is that the video transmitters are so big, heavy, and power hungry that they're very, very difficult to fit into smaller quadcopters. My opinion is that you can get down to about three inch prop size or 95 millimeters with something like this naked Cadex Vista. It's just a Cadex Vista that's had all the heat sinks removed to save weight and still get pretty good flight performance. But when you get down to something like this two inch Flywoo Baby Nano 2S, you make a lot of compromises. At this point, all the pilots flying HD Zero are laughing at me because this is a 65 millimeter Tiny Whoop, which has the HD Zero Whoop Light Bundle in it, which is an ultra lightweight HD Zero video transmitter and camera combination that does get light enough to go all the way down to 65 millimeters and still fly pretty well. And on anything larger, it, you just barely even notice the additional weight. But not everybody flies HD Zero. Enter the Walksnail Avatar 1S Mini Video Transmitter. Uh, this is a quadcopter that I put it in. Hold on, let me show it to you in the box. This video transmitter and camera are significantly lighter than the original Walksnail video transmitter, but they don't quite get down to the weight of the HD Zero Whoop bundle. And that brings us to the product we're gonna be looking at today, the Avatar HD Mini 1S Light Kit, which is an even smaller and lighter version of the Avatar video transmitter. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Here we've got the 1S VTX on the top and the new Light 1S VTX on the bottom. And you can immediately see a few of the differences between them. Both of them have the same 25 millimeter spacing on their mounting holes, so they're gonna mount in the same frames in exactly the same way. But the original VTX was 33-ish millimeters square, whereas the new light VTX is just a little bit smaller at a flat 30 millimeters exactly. And that means it's gonna hang out a little bit less over the mounting holes and just be a little bit easier to work with. But mostly it saves weight. Additional weight savings come from modifications to the camera. The light VTX has a smaller case. Uh, some people have suggested that it's exactly the same camera sensor and lens, just in a smaller, lighter case. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the footage from these two a little later in the video and see if that seems to be true. The changes to the camera's case do mean that the light camera doesn't have standard 14 millimeter mounting holes. You're gonna need to mount it in like a whoop sized canopy and typically they hold the lens of the camera to mount. Uh, so that's probably not gonna be too much of an issue, but if you do have a canopy that requires those mounting holes, you're going to need to get creative with how it's held in there. The wire harness on the light VTX comes from the factory direct soldered instead of using a plug like the previous version did. This again is in the name of weight savings. The Walksnail VTX comes with a USB plug that plugs into the video transmitter for offloading footage. They have an onboard DVR that can record footage in flight and for firmware updates. The plug is not the same between these two versions of the VTX. The plug on the new light VTX is smaller and is a different size than the plug on the full size VTX and the previous one is VTX. Uh, it does come with a plug, but you will need to keep two plugs if you've got multiple different VTXs with different sizes on them. I'm not sure how to explain this, but I've heard some people say that they're shipping this video transmitter with this heat spreader removed to save just a little bit more weight. Mine came directly from Walksnail and has the heat spreader on, so I'm not sure what to make of that. Now let's take a look at the weight of these video transmitters. And as we do, bear in mind that the sort of baseline for reference should probably be the HD Zero Whoop bundle, which comes in at just about six grams for the video transmitter and the camera, not counting the antenna. And I'll tell you why I'm not counting the antenna in just a second. So the original 1S Walksnail VTX came in at 10.2 grams. This new one is 9.5 grams. So we're saving just a little bit less than a gram, which is not nothing, but not a massive amount. And compared to the Walksnail VTX, a difference of six grams to 9.5 grams or 10 grams is pretty substantial. Bear in mind that just three or four grams really adds up when you're dealing with quadcopters that themselves may only be 25 or 30 grams. That's like 10% of the quadcopter's total weight. Here's the reason I didn't weigh the antennas. 
because the standard antenna that comes with the 1S Walksnail VTX comes in at 1.6 grams, whereas the little micro antenna that comes with the light VTX is a full gram lighter. And that's that's a big a part of the difference in weight between them. When you hear this guy being advertised, they're gonna tell you it's a difference of 10 grams versus 12 grams, and they're gonna say they saved two grams. They really didn't. You could always get one of these little whip antennas and put it on your Walksnell video transmitter if you wanted to save weight. There's some reasons why you might not want to do that though. And the reason comes down to this L that's imprinted on this antenna that came with the Firefly 2S Baby Nano. That L means this antenna is left-hand circular polarized. And what you need to know about polarization is that polarization works best when the antenna on the transmitter and the antenna on the receiver is matched. The antennas that you've got on your goggles are also left-hand circular polarized antennas. This antenna, however, is linear polarized. And that means that there is going to be a small amount of loss whenever it is used with a circular polarized antenna, even in like the best case. And that amount of loss is nominally about 3 dB, which equates to a difference in range of about 1.4 times. In other words, you could expect to get about 1.4 times more range with a circular antenna than with this little uh, whip antenna, this linear antenna. If you want to know how I derived that 1.4x ratio, uh, I've got a whole video about the difference between dB ratios and how to calculate how much more or less range you're going to get based on different transmit power or different, uh, different dB ratios. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. It's a little bit it's a little, it's got a little bit of math, but it really explains the concepts in a way that helps you understand just how much worse your range is going to be with a different antenna like this. The reality is that that 1.4x is only under sort of ideal lab conditions. And in the real world, you may get more, and you may get less range uh, when going to this antenna. It just is gonna depend on too many factors to sort of sum up. But in general, I think you're gonna see less range less range with this antenna than with a proper circular polarized one, if only because the circular polarized ones tend to be a little bit better made, but they're heavier. I should also say that no matter which antenna you end up using, it should not be this antenna that comes with the Walksnail video transmitter. The Walksnail antennas are really bad. That's not just my sort of subjective opinion. Uh, Alex Grieve, the owner of Video Aerial Systems, who designs and manufactures antennas, put them on his uh, little testing machine, and he also said they were just really, really bad. So you absolutely will get better range if you swap this out for some aftermarket antenna. In fact, this antenna is really just a length of wire there's kind of less to screw up with this little antenna than there is with this one. You might actually get better range with this little whip antenna just because this one is so freaking bad. But you're gonna get better range with a properly made circular polarized antenna. And left hand circular. It's gotta be left hand because that's probably what's on your goggles. Next, we're gonna take a look at the footage from the cameras and we're gonna see if the smaller camera is really exactly the same as the larger one, just in a smaller case. But before we do that, if you decide at the end of this video that you wanna pick this video transmitter up, uh, there are links down in the video description below this video and they are affiliate links. It's one of the easiest ways that you can support the channel is to go down there and click that affiliate link and then make any purchase at the affiliated vendor. When you, you could buy this, you could buy anything, just before you do your shopping. Heck, you could bookmark one of my affiliate links if you really felt like it. Click that affiliate link, do your shopping, check out. I get a little commission. Doesn't cost you anything. It's a very, very easy way for you to support the channel. And it really, it's a small amount, but it does add, you, you know how much you spend on the hobby. So uh, yeah, links down below. On with the video. Well, okay, here's the footage from the original 1S mini video transmitter. That is the sort of camera in the case, not the sort of nakedized camera that comes with the light video transmitter. I've placed the cameras in the exact same spot on the bench, exact same distance from the wall, angled them and aligned them as carefully as I can, and let's compare. And here is the light camera. Uh, it, it's a little hard to tell because the light camera, I, I confess, it's just a little bit 
rolled to the side. Uh, but it looks to me like the light camera has just a little bit wider field of view. Not by much, uh, just a little bit wider field of view than the original 1S camera. The fisheye seems about the same. The overall color and image quality seems about the same. Uh, my guess is that when they designed that sort of naked camera, maybe the focal distance between the lens and the sensor changed just a little bit. I don't know, but overall uh, they seem very, very comparable. And for additional comparison, here is the larger Waxnil camera. Uh, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison because this is mounted in a quadcopter, so I couldn't quite get it down touching the table like I could with the other two cameras. But uh, one thing that stands out is that the larger camera seems to have an even wider field of view, uh, which I was not expecting, but mm, there you go. As far as capabilities go, the new light video transmitter has the same capabilities, exactly the same capabilities as the original 1S video transmitter. Same specifications, same features, and same performance. Uh, so rather than dive deep into that, I'm going to refer you to the video where I put the 1S video transmitter in this quadcopter. That was my sort of full review of the 1S video transmitter, and we talked about it there. kind of don't want to just reinvent the wheel there. You also might be wondering how the weight of the video transmitter affects the way the quadcopter flies. And I'm going to refer you to a video where I bought four of this Firefly Nano Baby, one with HD0, one with Walksnail, one with DJI, and one with Analog, all at different weight classes. It was, in fact, the mini video transmitter, although it doesn't appear to have the light camera. So maybe it's like a half a gram heavier. But I'm going to put cards on screen for you and links down in the video description if you want to check out those videos. I'll see you there.